Welcome back, everybody, to the Island of Cinnabar. This is our podcast, the Cinnabar Hot Takes. And we got DJ Big C and myself, Mochi Larry, um, our teammate, uh, our teammate Joe, Joey Dreams, couldn't make it today, but he'll be here for the next episode. It won't be a problem. But today's going to be real easy, all right? Well, first, let me ask DJ Big C, how are, how are you today? How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Over here battling day by day, all the battles that we have. Went in with my Pikachu, finishing up with a Raichu, a Lowland style. And that's wonderful to hear. I, I'm really happy to hear that. And do you mind if I share with what we're we're what we're going to be covering today? You might you mind if I let the people know? Oh no, take off. Go ahead and start. All right. So everybody, today we've had a pretty good season so far. So we want to take a look at who have been the MVP so far of the Cinnabar Island Draft League. We're looking at members that have been outperforming out KOing or out assisting some of these others that are on the team. And some of these guys are still on the bench. They haven't even left the bench yet all season, but we're still going to be talking about them too. Cause we got a chance here. We, we got, we have an opportunity here to really dig deep. Now, DJ big C he's been doing his research. I'm a, I'm a comment on a couple of them, but this man, he has a pretty good idea of what's going on. So DJ Big C, let him know who we got out there. Oh, so let's start with this, man. This is going to be the DJ Big C A list here. And we're going to go from the bottom. Instead of going top five, we're going top seven. Because we got seven teams available in this draft. We're going with number seven right now, in my opinion. Bottom of the barrel, but not terrible. Club Fairy. So... Clefairy's and Team Believe It, amazing Pokemon with the friend guard, has a lot of great things going with it with the Evil Light. It's, it's just an ability that's amazing, helping up with your team, giving it that extra um, 25% more defenses. It helps against a lot of the offensiveness that we have in the league. And so you're talking about that friend guard, right? I'm specifically pointing out the friend guard on the Clefairy. Okay, okay. I just, I'm just making sure. Right. Go yeah, ahead. So, so we have a Clefairy here. Not only does it have Friend Guard, but it also has Follow Me, which is going to help with t soaking up that damage. And since the Evil Light is on it, it's going to be able to have even more defenses than what a normal Clefable would have for you. And, and it's just awesome to see that this Pokemon is up there as a top MVP for the team. Believe it. It's not number one. The, uh, well, I mean, it's not number six, which in my opinion, is number six in this list would be Moltres Galarian form. Now, nothing against Team Venomous Mochis, but, you know, if it compared to the other MVPs on each team, I do believe that Moltres Galarian form is number six on the list. Um, it has an amazing special defense, amazing stats, bulk, very strong bulk for uh, a flying type Pokemon, uh, which is not characteristics of it so it is very surprisingly looks frail but it really isn't you know for anybody that doesn't really look into numbers but a few things that i see on this uh moltres is one the ability the fact that it keeps getting stronger every time it passes halfway you heal it a little, little bit guess what activates again um another thing that's going on with this moltres is that it gets nasty plot being a dark pokemon nasty plot it is it's usually a, a hand-in-hand uh, -hand combo so you're going up two stages plus your ability if you let's say they put you under and um under 50 percent on your first turn because you did um nasty plot that's another stage so you basically got a plus three going to into your attack and if you had a weakness policy activated that's a plus five it, it just gets crazy from there <clears throat> so I, I really do believe that this Pokemon is an MVP for uh, Venomous Mochi, but it's not number five. My number five on this list, believe it or not, is going to be Goldango. So Goldango's out here, you know, s s taking Pokemon names, knocking out Pokemon's left and right. Amazing ability with gold, gold as go good as gold. 
He has what we call a trifecta, good ability, good stats, and uh, just looks great. And actually really good attacks. I mean, has a special attack that he's the only one that knows it, which is make it rain. I expect me up in the future to learn it. That's just my opinion. Um, (laughs) So make it rain, being a stab um, 120 on 100% accuracy is insane. And I really do like how they set this Pokemon up to be number 1,000. Does not disappoint. You could go a little bulkier set. You can go full offensive. It knocks out any fairies out there. I think there's no fairy out there that wants to face this guy, even for fun. Uh, so in his Terra abilities, you can go Terra Steel to give it more damage, Terra Ghost to give it more damage. Crap, you can give it to Eric dragon if you want to dodge anything that's going to be a fire type coming at you so or water uh, uh, by all means you know it has a lot of bil- you know, flexibilities uh but he is nothing close to number four number four on my list throw it up there it's gonna be urshifu single strike urshifu's hmm. amazing pokemon a crazy ability what's protect to urshifu nothing he looks at it and laughs and says oh you give me a free turn Urshifu single strike. He doesn't make the cut to be higher, but it doesn't mean that he is not good. Urshifu single strike has a lot of great things. Wicked Bow guaranteed critical hit with that 75 base power, 100% accuracy. So like when you make the map, it's basically having like 100 and what, uh, 115 base power with the stab and um, the crit. It, it gets more technical, obviously, with the Terra involved. So if you tear a wicked blow, you're looking at heavy damage. You're almost one hit knocking out any bulky Pokemon. Anything that's weak to dark is going to get knocked out if it doesn't have a, a focus edge. Uh, at least in the meta, obviously, you set up a Pokemon the right way. It'll probably survive a move, but it's going to be perfect to not get knocked out by an Aqua Jet. Which, guess who gets to do Aqua Jet? My next number three Pokemon, which would be the undeniable, technically, better Urshifu by 1%. Technically. Wait, hold on, DJ Big C. I, I, let me stop you right there. I'm going to stop you right there. All right. I like your pick so far. I want to go back to Clefairy. Oh, okay. You don't like it number seven? I think it's a great mod. Great Pokemon. An OG. Who would have thought Clefairy, Generation 1 Pokemon, appeared in the anime multiple times. It's been highlighted. Many said that Clefairy was almost going to be the mascot of the whole series. Featured in the manga. Then they went with Pikachu. But we're, ta- well, we're not talking about that. We're talking about competitive. We're talking about VGC. All right, all right. Clefairy, unmistakably, amazing Pokemon. If you're listening to this you are and you're playing in a draft league and you don't pick up Clefairy, you are insane. Clefairy did not even get drafted was not even a first round pick, not a second round pick, wasn't even an eighth round pick. Mm. We only had eight rounds. Clefairy left in the dust. A travesty. Now, according to your list, I think it's actually a pretty good spot. But the fact that it went undrafted, almost mascot of Pokemon, super defensive. Follow me. Helping hand. I mean, we can go all day. Oh, we can even get icy go. wind. Oh yeah. You know what's crazy? You know, you bring up the Clefairy, um, and, and it's just you can actually make it a healing Clefairy. You know what I'm saying with the heal pulse or life. Give it heal you have pulse. options. Give it a heal pulse, or you know what? You want to heal a little bit too? Give it the life do. Give you it the what? life do exactly. Yeah, you know, so Clefairy definitely. But it's, it just doesn't reach number six on my list. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's up there as MVP for that team. Um, and then number six, speaking of number six, we got Moltres G, Galarian version, dark flying. Beautiful looking Pokemon, especially the shiny. Big fan. Has been featured in the anime recently. 
Mm. Excellent Pokemon. Great ability. Berserk ability. Goes below half. Gets a plus one. Let me tell you, people sl- sleep on a plus one. A plus one is a difference between being in the yellow zone and getting a KO. I kid you not. There are many KOs that I could not have gotten if they didn't activate Berserk. As soon as Berserk goes off, boom, they're out. Great ability, great ability, great move. Has the best move of the three Galar birds. Fiery Wrath. Dark move, hits both Pokemon, 20% chance of flinch. It's got a dark type rock slide. 100% accurate. Way better than Rock Slide, in my opinion. No immunities. There's no immunities to Rock Slide either, but less immunities to Dark than there are to Rock. You mean less resistances? Correct. Resistances, that's what I mean. Fiery Wrath, great move. Berserk, great ability. Both unique to one Pokemon. Galarer. Moltres. Galar Moltres, one of a kind. I don't got much else to say about him. He's my he's my boy. I love him. But if this thing does not make a comeback in VGC before Worlds, I will be surprised. Especially I will up be with like surprised. Comfy or paired up with like a Cresselia. It's kind of nuts. Agreed. It's got the nice bulk. It doesn't have the defense bulk like it got. It has the special bulk, but there's ways to make that work. Oh, yeah. It may require a little too much investment for other people's liking because, you know, everybody can pick the good stuff. Like your top three, for example, you're, you're going to mention the top three very shortly. And, we're, and people are going to see why Moltres G might not fit on that list compared to those three. But I, th- I think in the right mind, on the right team, it's got a place. Especially with... Uh, you know, uh, with all this expanding force around, guess who don't got to worry about expanding force? Ooh. Moltres G. Moltres That's all I'm says, saying. Moltres says I'm in the dark. That's it. He's in the dark, can't see him. Number five. Number five. Great Pokemon you mentioned, number five. Do you feel like oh. he's higher or? Goldingo's a great Pokemon. I love Goldingo. Big fan. As soon as he came out, I knew this thing's going to make a splash in the scene. A lot of people didn't know too much about him yet, but anybody who used him in the playthrough, they already knew. 100 base steel type move. Special steel type move. Hits both Pokemon. 100% accurate. Only downside, a minus one to special attack. Easy to fix that. Hit a nasty plot. Have a choice specs. Switch in and out. No problem. Steel Ghost, like you said. Beautiful typing. Great ability. Good as gold. Status moves don't work, but it's also to your downfall. Can't use Helping Hand. Can't use Heal Pulse. But the benefits outweigh the detriments. 100%. -hmm. Great Pokemon. Is he better than Urshfu Dark? I don't know. It, it, you know what? I would personally say yes. Due to the full on stab on special defense on a steel, I mean, special attack on a steel type, that's nuts. It is. As, because most fairy Pokemon usually are not that bulky. And then when they are, it's too special defense. So, like, having that big old number on special defense, it it, it makes them kind of like, I mean, special attack, it makes fairy types not feel safe. They see a Goldango, they're switching out. Or protecting that turn. If they can survive. Or Terra. They're literally going to do one of the three. Like, I I believe in in Season 1, Sylveon's literally was Terra Fire just to avoid Goldango. Nothing else. Or a Terra Water. Those are another option. Or Terra Steel. Yeah. Well, the advantage of Terra Fire was you went Terra Blast onto the Goldengo and it would knock it out. With yeah, the there you fire. go. That would do that. Exactly. 
So that that was the advantage. And also your Terra Blast was always fairy, not normal, which was, you know, why not? Instead of giving a moon blast. You know, so it's one of those things like Sylveon's really had a counter to Goldengo, but everybody else know. They, they all kind of just fell to the Goldengo, so fairy Pokemon had to fear Goldengo being on the on the, on the opposite side. Absolutely, hundred percent. Because the fairy Pokemon laugh at Urshifu Dark. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They, they do. do. Urshifu Dark can handle anything else in front of him except a fairy. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be running Poison Jab just in case. Just in case for that. Oh, it's guaranteed. He has a three-move syndrome. That's what I call. One of them has to be Poison Jab. Um, so what's your opinion on the uh, Urshifu? Urshifu on his own, he provides something very useful in the late game. You just got to make sure you clear the flutter mains from the field. If there's a flutter main on the other side of that field, boy, let me tell you that Urshifu is not standing a chance, even with that sucker punch. I know the sucker punch hits real hard, but you're going to need to invest that Terra into your Urshifu. You're going to need to make sure that Sash is protected. And you got to make sure that you you put a lot of stank on that sucker punch. Because if there's another Pokemon right next to that, right next to that Fluttermane, there's no way. There's no way it can't double up. But if it's 1v1 Fluttermane, it's got a good chance, especially if you protected the, the Sash. With that Pokemon, it's very important. It's very important to protect your resources. When you're using that Pokemon, you have to be thinking ahead of time. I am going to wait to use this thing. I might bring them out early game, switch them out, but this is definitely a closer. And he's one of the best closers. Him and King Gambit, them two amazing closers. And they both happen to share a dark type. I was just about to mention that too. They're kind of dark, you know, with that low key. I'll see you later. Well, exactly. let's talk about my number three. Let's, let's hear it. I want to hear these top three. So my number three, in my opinion, is Urshifu Rabbit Strike. And see, these top three, first of all, very close to each other. But let's get to Rabbit Strike Urshifu. Rabbit Strike Urshifu has an insane, insane counter to Focus Ashes. That attack, um, Surging Strikes, hitting Three times critical hit each time is insane. It, it is one of my favorite attacks ever created. Um, is is it's just disgusting, and especially if you water Terra, which usually is the common route. You water Terra into it, so you're giving it more damage. You have stab, giving it more damage. It's like doing three fifties. Think about that. 350s with critical hit guaranteed. And it, they all hit because I believe it's 100% accuracy. Yes, 100% accuracy. That's insane. Now, most of the time you see them rocking a choice card to be faster than the opponent so they can, uh, you know, take out what he can. Uh, you want to be able to survive a, a sucker punch from a Shen Pao. Uh, which is interesting that that's even mentioned. Uh, so, like, obviously, if you're low HP, you want to make sure you're able to survive that. Uh, I mean, you are a fighting type, but most of the time you leave that fighting type for the Water Terra, so you, you do got to look out for those. Um, Flutter mains, normally you're not in such a same threat if you're um, Terra, but if you're not Terra, you're really... That's your number one weakness is Flutter Main. Um, now, I do like the fact that he gets Aqua Jet. A lot of water Pokemon don't get this attack, which surprises me. But Aqua Jet being able to be that quick attack to knock out anything with low HP, it's just the cherry on the top for me. Um, and being able to learn U-Turn and Ice Spinner. So obviously, if you want to get rid of Terrains, Ice Spinner. If you want to be able to do a little swap. Here, swap there, U turn. Um, it's got a decent speed of 97. It's not too high, but it's not too low. Um, 
that's why his choice scarf is really recommended. Um, another thing I do see here, another uh, style people use detect on him. So that's another option as well. And yeah, I, it's, it's, what's your thoughts on this guy? I do have some thoughts on him. I think Urshifu Rapid Strike. A little bit better than his brother. But lately, his brother has has seen a little bit more competitive play. Just recently. Just recently. Tennessee, Knoxville. Urshifu Rapid Strike doesn't even break top 12. Which is insane to think about. Insane. Insane. But he is still good. This Choice Scarf variant, it's been very recommended. A lot of people like it. I am... I could take it or leave it. I know you like that extra speed. That extra speed is going to come in handy more often than not. I'm personally but, a fan of Mystic Water on it or um, or Choice Band, if you could give it a Choice Band. Yes. Having that extra power goes a long way. And I think people are going for the choice scarf is they want to turn one U-turn because even if you protect, he's still going to get you. He's still going to get you with that U-turn and he's still going to be able to pivot. So being unable to stop a pivot, that's a huge turn one investment. Mm -hmm. And then you could turn in to let's say your incineroar in the back row boom incineroar comes in free turn in puts out the intimidate if you're smart it probably came in kind of safe so it's not going to take too much damage even if it does it's kind of bulky next turn it's got a fake out so you're able to do two things at once and just seeing it across the board it definitely kind of puts some pressure on you so you may have to switch. If you see Urshifu Rapid Strike in front of you, you might be the one that needs to do a switch. You might need to be say, hey, let me reevaluate. Because if this guy hits me with the Rapid Strike, um, with a Surgeon Strikes, that's going to be the end of my Pokemon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He is definitely an aggressive turn one Pokemon. That's what I love about him. I don't think the other Urshifu quite is that threatening. But he is threatening. I think I think Dark Urshifu, more of a closer. Rapid Strike, more of an opener. You have him. Even if you intimidate him, he can just get the hell out of there. No problem. But he forces your opponent to either focus his attention with a fake out or a Terra or a switch. Whenever you make your opponent have to use resources on one Pokemon, you know you got a good mon. And that's when yeah. the chess game comes in. That's when you got to play around it. You're gonna be like, all right, what do I do? Do I, you know, do I hit this? You know, do I do I hit this guy? Uh, is he gonna switch? He's probably gonna switch, or is he gonna attack me? I don't know. Whatever you got a Pokemon that makes you think twice, you got yourself a good mind. Hundred percent. All right. And my next one on the list, number two on the whole draft, it's gonna go to Fluttermane. Surprisingly, at number two, and I'm gonna go into specifics why. So you know how we always talk about receipts and stuff? Well, the receipts out here are missing. I don't know what's going on. Why this flutter main is literally the definition of uh, Ben Simmons. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, like, boy. Just sitting in the bench for no reason. I, we're talking about a Pokemon that can take out teams. You know what I mean? I'm talking about huge, huge percentage numbers. Is literally just sitting there looking like, hmm, what should I get for dinner tonight? You know, instead of, oh, I'm going to go hunt my dinner. It's a whole different attitude that it has. But, um, reason why number two for Fluttermane, one, fairy type, it is just the perfect typing. Ghost typing. 135 at special attack, 135 special, I mean, special defense, and 135 speed. What else do you want? That is the most insane stat line for a Pokemon ever. Not legendary. 
it is insane how bulky this Pokemon is in special defense, but also how it has no HP, <laughs> has no attack, which it doesn't need, and no um, uh, defense. Correct. And it still wrecks havoc. Every team in the top eight had this Pokemon on their team, I think. In the uh, Knoxville. If I can remember off the top of my head, I believe you right. one team. You're right. I think you're right. And if it wasn't at Knoxville, they had them over in Charlotte. And if it wasn't Charlotte, they had them in Portland. This Fleur Pokemon Maine is, is just... He's everywhere. like having your own Steph Curry on your team, man. Everybody wants a Steph Curry. Oh, yeah. Real life, there's only one. Fluttermane's like, here you go. You want one? You got one? You got one? Everyone wants one. It does one thing extremely well. And that's hit hard. Mm -hmm. And move fast. Listen, and it's got great they... typing. Great typing. Three immunities. Three immunities. I was just about to mention that. Three immunities. <laughs> Three immunities, immunity to dragon, fighting, normal type. It has a way to boost with its own ability. What's wild is it takes neutral damage from poison. Think about that. Fairy's number one weakness is poison. Rarely anybody uses steel moves against a fairy. They usually use a poison move because it's more guaranteed of a hit. I think there's more poison moves than there are steel moves. That is also a fact. I mean, there's quite a few steel moves, but a lot of them are locked into a particular Pokemon, or they are, um, like kind of weak, you know, because they're like things that you give to early Pokemon, like Steel Wing or Metal Claw. You know, they're not like very consistent. Well, the thing is with Steel, it's like one of those typings that has great defenses, terrible offense. For I mean, for the general public, a specific Pokemon in the Steel community excel in that offense. Hashtag Goldengo, you know, Metagross, just to name a couple. Sure, sure. I mean, I could even name, um, oh my goodness, Genesic, but that'd be a reach. Due to the fact that it's rarely ever used in events because it's a mythical. And but... you're right. You're right. A lot of great steel types that can take care of Fluttermane. A lot of them not available yet. Some of them are, you know, but Goldingo for sure. But then Goldingo has to worry about the the Shadow Ball. So that's another investment. And it's also, like, all right, I got to save my Terra for Fluttermane. Like, Fluttermane is such a threat, it makes your opponent. Have to save your Terra for it if it didn't bring something to beat it. Like, that's how good it is. Yeah. And you can only save your Terra for so many Pokemon. You know, the thing is, it's only one LeBron James, and that's why he's number two. But let's talk about MJ, the one and only Thunderclap, Raging Bolt, number one on my A list. What what can we say about this Pokemon? Honestly, like it's it's insane. The the ugliest new reveal we've ever received, <laughs> in my opinion, and comes out to be one of the most insane stats on a Pokemon. I right, this Pokemon says, "I'm here to take names and keep going." 125 HP, 91 defense, 137 special attack, 89 de special defense, and 75 speed. 75 speed, it gets almost screaming. Almost screaming, not trick room. It's not yet. It's almost screaming trick room. Um, this Pokemon, Thunderclap, priority plus one sucker punch for the lightning is insane. Uh, it has a crazy base, which I believe is 90, I'm sorry, 70, but it has Thunderbolt, which has a base of 90, and you just tear a lightning into this Thunderbolt, you're knocking out most Pokemon that doesn't have full investment to 
special uh, defense. Um, it, it, it gets the ability to learn weather ball. So you have the ability to have a little, depending on what weather's out, a little bit more advantage there. Uh, call mine to boost them up more. It, it's a lot to... Uh, a lot to describe there. Um, you can you can go bulkier with uh, Raging Bolt, and not really lose any attack, or you can go full attack and see how far you go before. Uh, I'm sorry about that. You can go full attack be- and then just before your opponent can knock you out with a modest set. And just knock out anything. Uh, I mean, lightning type is a great typing to be. Uh, one weakness. Uh, I would mean, it's also a dragon type, but most of the time, if you're bringing this guy out, you're going to tear this guy and just walk over your opponent or whatever Pokemon. He, he legit, Raging Bolt against me is legit undefeated. Dude would literally destroy the floor. Um, but... I agree. Great Pokemon. Great Pokemon, great choice. It has its own signature move. It's a good signature move. Lately, uh, some of these signature moves have been hit or hit or miss, but this one, very good. Mm -hmm. Thunderclap, Sucker Punch, but it's electric type, and it's special. Mm -hmm. Has access to all kinds of dragon moves. Dragon Pulse. Draco Meteor. Fantastic choices. You could you could hit some electro webs. Electro web is just electric icy wind. Decent option if you want to go that route. You don't have to. You could hit a calm mind. You could hit a breaking sweep. Lower your opponent's attack a little bit. Hits both Pokemon. He gets Stomping Tantrum if you go physical. But if you go physical, you're neglecting his amazing special attack. Special attack right up there with Fluttermane. And he can attack before Fluttermane every time. I think that's a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing, great Pokemon. Very bulky. There are not too many electric Pokemon that have this level of bulk. With the typing to go with it. I think the only one that I would say technically has that bulk like that is Sekrum. And he's Mr. Legendary Box Pokemon. You know what I'm saying for electric? Right. It shares the same typing. Electric Dragon, in my opinion, is one of the bulkier Pokemons. Yeah. I, or his fusion might be better by a mile on defense, but either or. Raging Bull is in his class of his own MVP. The, I, I don't care anybody says it by my list. Yeah, I ain't taking this guy off for number one. This is Michael Jordan. Well, he's tall for a reason. He sees above all the haters. They can't even reach the heights that this Pokemon is going to reach. They can't reach the heights he's going to reach literally or the heights that he is going to reach within regulation F. This Pokemon is is dominating the metagame. You're going to see him at every single regionals and he's going to make an impact and he's going to hurt people and people are going to have to deal with it because there's not much you can do against this thing. It also gets rising voltage which is not even necessary because you would have to activate some electric terrain to even make that shit even useful. But he still gets it. He gets another thing that he could say in your face. Look at me. I get my own signature move and then I get rising voltage that nobody else can get right now. For some weird reason, Pokemon was like, hey, you know what? Let's make Raging Bolt even weirder. Let's give him something else. Even though other Pokemon can learn it in the past, right now, Raging Bolt, he's the only one. But hear me Rising out Bolt. on that. Think Doesn't matter. That. Let's think about something real quick with that. 
So he gets a uh, move that's good against the opposite Pokemons, the Irons. They want the terrain if they don't have a booster energy. And he gets a bonus because they had to bring in a terrain. I would love to see electric terrain be as useful as the sun. I'm sure Pokemon thought, hey, we're going to make electric terrain the and sun have a battle. Those two are going to be going neck and neck. It's going to be a blast. Meanwhile, they gave a singular Pokemon electric terrain. And great. unfortunately, he's not great. His stats are not as bad as it seems. I'm going to pull up those stats right now. I'm going to let you guys know what those are. Pinkerchin is his name. Pinkerchin. People sleeping on him. I might have to pull him out next season just to show people not to sleep on this guy. But Pinkerchin. All right. 48 HP. All right. Well, let's ignore that for a second, okay? I know 48 sounds bad. But 48 HP, okay, that is what it is. Can't do nothing about that. That's what he's got. He was born that way. Attack, <laughs> 101. Defense, 95. Respectable. Special attack, 91. Respectable. Special defense, 85. Still respectable, yeah. Best part here, speed, 15. Man, says Trick Room me. Slowest Trick Room user in the game. Well, not user, but beneficiary of Trick Room. He, no one beats him in a Trick Room race. Unless they're unevolved Pokemon and they're not really used that well. But this guy is slower than slow. Would you say Slowpoke's name is deceiving because it's not the slowest Pokemon? Slowpoke wishes he was as slow as this guy. <laughs> but let me fact check. All right, let me fact check because I don't want to. I don't want somebody to say, "Oh no, Slowpoke is actually a uh, speed of fourteen, you know." And so I'm a fact check. I'm gonna do it real quick right now. I'm looking at it. Slowpoke. Slowpoke is tied. Okay, fifteen. They're tied. Ooh. Oh, they're tied. I'm, I'm, I'm insanely lucky by saying that. <laughs> they're tied. They're tied. So slow bro is also fifteen or? or no, nah, I think he goes up to thirty probably. But that. Damn. But, but this guy, this guy right here. Mm. You're gonna have to put that two fifty two in HP if you want him to survive anything. That's just a fact of life. You got to mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. Put that two fifty two in HP. Okay. Then you got to decide. Am I giving Assault Vest all attack moves? Mm. Probably not, but it's an option because I think you really want Protect on this guy. Give him Protect. What else can this guy do? He's got, he does have his own move called Zing Zap. It's a physical move. It's, it's not bad. It does 80 damage, 100% accurate. 30% chance to make an opponent flinch. So it requires Trick Room if you want to get that benefit of the flinch. I see. However, he gets Acupressure. There's not a lot of Pokemon that get that. That's a move that's normally used by, you know, squids or, you know, things with long arms and long necks and stuff like that. Acupressure will give your partner Pokemon a plus two in a random stat. Think about that. Plus two that's in a insane. random stat. That's insane. It also, also it, that includes evasion and accuracy. Oh, wow. Interesting. I was not aware of effects of those two. I mean, I, I thought I saw something with evasion, but not the accuracy. So you it's you know you have you have the five basic ones and then those two so you got like seven different stats it could be you don't know what you're gonna get. Mm, okay. Let me double check that. I'm gonna double check that real quick. Make sure Gen five onward. Yeah, 
attack, defense, special attack, special uh, special defense, speed, accuracy, or evasion. It's, you're getting a plus two. You don't know what it's going to be. You roll the dice. Hey, plus two in attack, but it's a flutter main. Damn. Why the hell is this thing doing next to a flutter main? I don't know. That's what you get. Damn. It, but it does have a higher physical attack, but personally, I think special attack is the way to go. It gets scald. Wow. It gets scald. Okay. It gets the basic electric move cocktail of electric moves that you would expect. You know, you get Thunderbolt. You get Thunder. You get Wild Charge. You get Electro Web. That's pretty cool on this guy. Especially if you're not using Trick Room right away. You're like, hey, I'm going to slow down my opponent to help the partner Pokemon pick up a little bit of the pace. Boom. Hit an Electro Web. That's not too bad. Especially in the electric terrain. Now you're cooking with some decent damage. I'm just saying. Mm. Um, interesting Pokemon. Not the best. Not the worst. He gets water moves like Surf. He gets Sucker Punch. I'm just saying. Something to he think about. Potential. Definitely potential. Uh, um, I would say if I had a, uh, an option to increase this to 10 slots. Uh, uh, not, not, let's just keep it what it is. So we're down to these seven. We got the number one. We got the the mystery MVP that you you like, which the the Pokemon that was uh, just showcase. I can't say his name right. Pin, pin, Pinkerchin. 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 That's the next yeah. season. That's the next season conversation. I'm thinking about the future, but for today, the seven you got, they're right on the money. We might not always agree, but I agree with you today. How about that? All right, everybody, we're going to catch you in the next episode. Next episode, we're going to give you an update on those standings. But right now, I'll just let you know. Right now, number one is is uh, Golden State Goldangos. All right? They are piloted by Nehru. They're number one right now. Everybody else is fighting for number two and three spots. We're right number one right now, Nehru. Defeating everybody. Running through everybody. 2-0 victories. He will not be touched. This season, he's getting the number one spot. That is sealed in, sealed and done. Now everybody else is jockeying for the other positions. We're gonna see how that goes. We're gonna know. We're gonna know uh, next week who are, who's gonna be locked in for those spots, and that's when we'll give you update on that. Till next time, though, we're gonna catch you. We're gonna catch you next time, everybody, on the beautiful island of Cinnabar.